Hey, what's going on, guys? Peace and blessings. Shalom, shalom. How about us? Well, let's get into the word today. Yeah. All right. Today we're going to be talking about talking about uh, you know, thieves. Basically, thieves in the world. Now, God despises a thief. And this seems like, and it don't, doesn't it seem like thieves? Um, it seems like they thrive in this world, right? And it seems like the people who um. Who work hard or try to do it the right way. Always get the short end of the stick. They um seem like they always uh don't get what they deserve. But that's the thing, this this world is evil. You know, when you're a child of God, uh for the children all over the world, um, the enemy wants to strip you from everything that you even work for, everything, your possessions. And one thing that really gives him an opening is uh when uh we have committed a lot of sins. We uh, open the doors to the to the enemy to afflict, to steal, to oppress um, your finances. Of course, God even said, uh, "When you pay, when you give back your tithes and offerings, he will he will rebuke the, the he will rebuke the devourer." So the devil's like the devourer. He can devour everything. He can devour the fruits of your labor. So you know, God is even when God releases the locusts, the canker, and the palm worm, and the caterpillar. Um, you know how to eat up everything. That's like your harvest. Everything you work for, what you pray for, your your your, your, your opportunities, your pray, but the things you pray for, um, your possessions. You know that's we ever ever lost possessions and you don't know where it went. You know, it's things in this world that we don't know. It's more it's more things that meet the eye. So this life is spiritual. So when you open the door, you know things. But the enemy is invisible. You have angels that's invisible. So the enemy can. Do things in the spirit realm. He can take things from you without you even knowing. So say if it's just uh, you got a dollar on the table, a little dollar on the table, when it's an opening and when God is allowing it to teach you a lesson, things like that, uh, they can a, a spirit can really come from the spirit realm and take your dollar from you, and you wonder where did my twenty where did my twenty dollars go? So that's how the devourer operates. So it's children of God. When you know you're going through these things, you have to be very vigilant and sober-minded. God said to be vigilant and sober-minded for the, you know, the devil. He's, he's prowling around like a wrong line, seeking what he made devour. And he wants to kill, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So we had to be um, sober-minded. So that's why it's so important as children of God. We, we can't backslide. You know when you backslide, you go, you fall back into the ways, you the things you were doing. And that's highly dangerous because, you know, the devil is waiting for you to go backward. And for children all over the world, as the world gets more grievous, uh, we had to be more wise. We had to be more. We had to rely on God for everything, on every aspect, not just some, but everything. We had to ask God to close every door. You, you had to plead the blood over your house. Like I plead the blood over my house right now. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover my apartment with the blood. So these these are the things that we had to do. So if you read the book when um Moses. When God sent the uh, the death angel to to Egypt to to kill all the firstborn of the Egyptians because the Egyptians were after the children of God, so God said, "I'm not going to allow this, the the Egyptians to destroy the children of God." So He sent the death angel through through the land to kill Pharaoh's army. Yeah, Pharaoh and his army and his servants. He killed them. Same thing up to you. The, the God will allow. He won't allow you to be destroyed. He will pull a, a leg and an arm for you, for all of us. So. Oh, hold on one second. No, I'll do it later. But yeah, I'm in a book of um, Proverbs. And this is what happens to the wicked men of this world. And I'm going to correlate Psalms 35 into it. Proverbs and Jewel. And it says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land, many are the princesses thereof, but, but by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain, which leaveth no food. It says, they forsake the law, praise the wicked. So those that forsake the law of God, they, they praise the wicked. They praise the evil things of this world. So it says, but such as keep the law, contend with them. So those that keep the law of God, he, he will contend against those on our behalf. It says, evil men understand not, understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Better is the poor that walketh in uprightness. And he that is in, that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. So, with that being said, I'm going to go to the next scripture.
scripture. So evil men will flee when no one is even chasing them. Because, you know, at this point, they've been used by the devil. And, you know, he'll send an angel of the Lord to, to, call, to go after the enemy. So you can come with me to Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verse uh, 4, I believe. So come on, go with me, go to Psalm 35. And uh, this is David, of course. He's pleading, he's asking God and praying to God for, to save him, deliver him from his enemies, to fight for him, vindicate him, recompense. Same thing we do when we've been wrong, because God said not to go in the flesh. Because, you know, you know, going around people, punching people, that's not going to help you against the people that's helping one another to, to, to do the things that they do to you. So just like the army, you punching one soldier, that's not going to defeat the problem at all. You got a whole another million of men that's still oppressing other people. So you have other people in this world that their sole job is to, to steal money from people, from the innocent. So um, Psalm 35 said, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that shall with me. Fight against those that fight against me. Take hold up, shield and buckle, and stand up for my help. Draw also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. I said, Let them be confounded and put to shame. So he would put your enemies to shame. And saying, those that seek out of my soul, for those that seek your soul, for no reason, uh, because you're a child of God. He said, let, let them see, let them be ashamed, those that seek out of my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion. So you put confusion to the camp of the enemies that's coming against you. He said, those that device you hurt. So you have people that device you hurt. You might have a group of people might be jealous of you because they see the anointing on you. They see the blessings in your life. They see that your, uh, your spirit fell and they're, they're not as happy as you. So these people might want to hurt you because the spirit within them is influencing them to, you know, want to destroy you, everything that you work for, everything that's yours. And some people go to the extent to try to disrupt your family. You know, you have people that uh, pray on your downfall and they pray, they, you know, just like you can pray positive prayers. Yeah. You know, when you speak evil words or, or a person, you, you're, that's a witch, that's a witch activity, witchcraft. So um, that goes for a man. So a man can speak grievousness. And God already said in Isaiah 10, he said, Woe unto those that make grievous, re, uh, write evil decrees and, and write grievous things. So the same thing, speaking out of your mouth, making evil decrees, and even writing it down. That's a sort of crap. And um, the Lord said, uh, well, David said, Let him be confounded and put to shame. And he said, Let him be a shabby for the wind, and let the angel of the Lord chase them. That they will be dark and slippery, that the angel of the Lord persecute them. So this, when that, that leads back to Proverbs 20, um, 24, no, 28. So the wicked will flee when no one is chasing them. So that's the thing. When they see the God in you, the resilience in you, they see the faith that you have in God, your enemies will flee. The devil, it scares the devil when he sees the, the faith in you and you know he can't shake you up. So that's one thing we had to build up. We had to build up our faith and through the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to go to Job 20, 24. That being said. I'm going to go to Job 20. Uh, wait 10 seconds, Job 20. Job 20, and it says, I'm going to go to verse hmm, 6. And this is, you know, anyone who's, you know, that's being an oppressor or a thief, going around stealing people's money or people's possessions or opportunities, you know, just like you can steal physical money, you have spiritual robbers as well. You know, this life is spiritual. So people that don't operate in 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 uh in the Holy Spirit, is, they're operating in something else. If they're operating in any other spirituality that's not of God, they're most likely going to be led to do things that's abominable. So of course, God said, those that commit abomination, they will be um cast into the lake of fire, and brimstone. That's the end result in Revelation. You know, said uh so this is a man. But the scripture about to teach um tell you. This is this is how wicked men, you know, they try for a little while, but the end result is destruction. It says, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever, like his own dung. So he's talking about his own children, his, his own dung. They, they that which see him shall say, where is he? You know, people look where where did, where did the wicked go? So these people will be taken without you. You you like where did they go? So even though he might up to the to the heavens unto the clouds, and they, even though he's trying for now, he's gonna lose it. God is gonna strip it from him. And he's gonna give it to someone else. He said, "Yeah, he shall perish."
for Abba like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yet he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also, shall, also which saw him shall see him no more. So the eyes that see him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor. So God will even deliver his children to be, you know, looking out for the children um, that's poor. And God, and God said those who consider the poor, he will deliver them in a time of trouble. So that's another that's another token, another gem right there. You know, wisdom pull on your days, he said. So when you when you consider the poor, when you when you make sure you uh take care of the poor and you know, you have so many people that drive up and down past homeless people and don't think once to give them ten dollars and they got five hundred dollars in their pocket. So God is gonna deny a lot of people when at the end or when they leave this earth, they're gonna say, I believe you, I believe in you, God. You say you didn't um but you rejected me. I was locked up, you didn't visit me, I was I was uh I hunger, you didn't feed me, and I was a thirst. You didn't, you didn't um, give me drink, and uh, they're gonna be like, I did, I gave. And this is even to the righteous. He's gonna say, uh, he said, you did, you you did, you did do that, but you didn't give it to me. So therefore, you never know who's behind the homeless person. You never know who you're stealing from. You know, the wicked might think this is just an average person he's stealing from. That's why ignorance is bliss. And uh, you do that to the wrong person, that God may be favoring. You never know the favor on a person's life that God has over that life. You do that, and it could be the last end of that man and his family. You know, God goes to an extra extent for his children. That's the thing. And it says, um, it says, uh, I shall see him, he shall be no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore his, their goods. His bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the end of dust. So all his sins of that man shall lie with him in his dust, all his iniquities, everything he's done. And though, and they were all recorded. You know, heaven and earth records everything man does. So, and what what makes it worse is when we don't repent. God has said to repent and turn away. Be, don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So you have a lot of people that's in bondage, that are um, stuck in habitual sin, deliberate sin, or deliberate wickedness. They find life in destroying people or hurting people. So, um, at this point. A person can be led by the familiar spirit to do these things, or they can be possessed, or they can have an antichrist spirit within them. I don't, if you ask me, the worst thing is the antichrist. There's no deliverance from the anti spirit. So you can deliver a person from, from a familiar spirit. But as far as uh, anti, that's one of the last tactics from the devil to use. And those people deny. God said, if you blast me against the Holy Spirit, he said, if you blast me against the Son of Man, it could be forgiven. But if you blast me against the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness. And there's no forgiveness for you in the, in the world to come. So in the next world that you're going to, the next realm, there's no forgiveness for you. Um, so when you're denying and rejecting the child of God, you're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. When a person is speaking the word of God and you reject it, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in the children of God. So if you, you know, people that say they believe God, but they're rejecting the word, um, that's an antichrist. That's the spirit of an antichrist. Now, sometimes you can lack the faith in believing the word, but that's why God said faith comes by hearing the word of God. It comes by hearing. So, yeah, um, those that, that's of the world, they don't have a hunger to hear the word. They don't have a hunger and they don't thirst to um, receive the word. And um, so, you know, God will allow certain things to happen in children's lives because they don't, they don't have the desire and zeal to turn away from being of the world. They, they want to be in the midst of all the um the cool things of the world, popularity, um wanna to go to trips, vacation with women, have a lot of money. You know, these things aren't satisfying to the soul because even once they do that, it's a lot of things that still come upon a person because it's not of God. It's not of the it's of the flesh. And God told us to be of the spirit. You gotta be in the spirit, you know, a carnal mind leads to death. So um it says uh his bones are full of sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet, though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, like I said, it's like it's sweet for certain people to, for a lot of people to do wickedness. Though it be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue. So he even hides wickedness under his tongue. So that even a wicked person that's led by the devil can smile in your face, shake your hand, but in his, under, in his mind, he's, he can be.
decided on to kill you, to steal from you, all of the above, because he's not spirit filled with the with the Holy Spirit. So that's why it's so important for the children of God to be separate. Don't yoke yourself with unbelievers, because those things can happen. And now that's why good people lose their life because they put their around, themselves around the wrong crowd and the wrong people. And it's only by the grace of God that that people get delivered from the hand of the wicked. You know, because the devil he really wants to kill every child of God in this world. You know, it's angels, it's angels against demons in, in the unseen world. You don't you don't see nothing flying around, but there's things going on in, in this world. You have the angels holding back demons from being able to carry out assignments against against cities, against nations, against towns, against churches. You know, it says uh. You say how to understand said though he spirit and forsaken not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned and his gall of ass within him. So it's just, God is gonna cause everything he starts gonna be like poison. He is not even gonna be able to, to keep it. And so he get his meat in his bowels is turned and his gall of ass within him. He he hath swaddled down riches. He shall vomit them up again. God shall cast him out of his belly. So God will cause everything, you know, thieves and robbers. That they stole to get gain and to, you know, to sit on money. He God will cast him out of his belly until he shall suck the poison of ass the vipers. The viper that's like a, a, a python. A python swallows up things. He swallows up other people's blessings. He can swallow up your your your, your, your faith. He can swallow up your, your your spiritual life. Everything he can swallow up your, your, your faith of your family members. I said, uh, you got to pray for God to restore him. And you got to believe that he can restore these things. He said, and the viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, and the brooks of honey and butter. And that which he labor for shall he restore. You know. And say, and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be. Restitution. Restoration. He shall restore everything he's stolen. Whatever it may be that he's stolen. And he shall not rejoice therein. Because he has oppressed and forsaken the poor. Because he has violently taken away in house which he built in up. So, that's, that's the end result of man that, uh, you know, demonically oppressing people. And, you know, when people take your things like that, you know, you have a spirit. You know, these people that's not of God that are doing these other spiritual things that can be doing, like, uh, you know, uh, astral projection. They can do these things and steal from you. All type of, this, this type of spiritual. And uh, once God gives you an open ear, God said, he who hears, let him hear. But yeah, he will hear, let him hear. And um, I'm going to go to the last scripture, Psalm 37, verse 8. So, you have to keep an eye. When you know you're going through a spiritual warfare, make sure you keep certain things to you. Because even if certain things, I'll be missing. I'll be like, where did it go? You know, the enemy is a thief. He wants to keep He wants to keep you frustrated. He wants to keep you, um, you know, busy with uh, looking for stuff all the time. Like, you don't know where your wallet went. It's still your wallet. Here, you use somebody to steal your wallet. Here, you use someone to steal your charger. Any and everything that he can do to frustrate you and to make you just go crazy, literally. You know, I'm on Psalm 37, verse um, 5. And these are for the people, for the children of God. This pertains to the children of God. Verse 5, I'm talking about verse 5. It said, Commit their way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring, he shall bring forth our righteousness as a light, and our judgment as a new day. So he will bring. You know, if you wait upon the Lord and commit your ways into him, he shall bring in the past. Everything. Restitution, healing, all of the above. He shall bring forth forth our righteousness. He'll bring forth the righteousness, righteousness as the light. And thy judgment as a new he's bring judgment on your enemies and everything for all the people as noon as a noon day. And rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not so because of him who crosses in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So you get men of wicked devices. They devise evil against people, especially people who aren't like them. So if a python sees that you are an angel, he's going to, you know, devise evil against you because you're an angel. He wants to steal things from you. If he knows you're a child of God, he wants to devise wickedness against you. You know, uh, an en the enemy can um, take control over a person that handles your bank account. Whoever's uh, that's in control of a bank account, whatever bank you are, and you're going through a spiritual warfare, if you have an open door to the enemy, uh, financial oppression and things like that. Uh, the enemy can use a bank, the uh, whoever's in control, be wherever you're, a Bank of America, wherever it is. He can use them to steal your bank, your money. 
Simple as that. We can use the enemy, a random person across the world, to go into your bank and hack into you. Just so, because your child of God, he wants to frustrate, he wants you poor. He doesn't want you to rise in life. So that's how we can do double this. So he brings wicked device to pass. And this is for us. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. So even though we want to wrath against the enemy, God says cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So fret. Stay away from refrain from doing evil. God said not to content evil with evil, but overcome with love. And that can be very hard sometimes. God knows we are, we're only human. And he knows when we have our breaking point and things like that. And verse 9 says, For evil doors shall be cut off. So these people that, you know, thrive off, they will be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. You had to believe that. I declare the decree that always said that you will inherit the earth. So fret away from, so, but it said fret, that's up. So fret from anger. Stay away from wrath. Cease from anger. Well, that, I mean, and even at that, I think it's in Mark. 5 25 or mark 20 mark 5 verse 20 it says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth and blessed are the hunger blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they should be filled and blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy uh, blessed, are, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of god they should see the kingdom so this pertains to the children of god all over the world um so that's what i got for you guys today god bless you guys hope you guys have a splendid day and make sure speak positive don't don't let your mind wander on the negativity because you know we're, we're we're not like the wicked ones they 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 can't they can't help but to think negative they can't help but to do evil but we're the children of god and god is always fighting the battles exodus 14 14 hold your peace for the lord fights for you so uh, the children of israel they, they hold they held their peace moses told them hold their peace for the lord fights for you so the Lord is fighting for his people all over the world. If he wasn't fighting for this world, this world would be destroyed already. Literally. And God, um, he's not going to allow that. He's the creator. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And he's using the children of God to deliver the people that are in darkness, those that are appointed to die, those who are in, um, in the shadow of death. And even though, even though I'm making this video, I'm still going through my affliction because of the, you know, the things I've committed. The sins I've committed, and God has forgiven me, but um, there's certain things I got to go through. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual prison, you know. It's scriptures in the Bible, a Bible about people being in prison. Um, you know, you have people that's in spiritual prison, but the, but the, um, the God has allowed demons to put people in spiritual prison. I mean, people in prison going through affliction, sickness, disease, financial oppression, mental affliction, and they can't get out. And even you have families all over the world that's in prison. They're all in bondage. So that's what's called demonic bondage. So um, God is going to set the lawful captives free. Um, that's the scripture. He says he's going to set the lawful captives free. So um, he said the yoke. I think, I think it's Isaiah 27, verse 10. He said the yoke breaks the uh, anointing. The, the anointing breaks the yoke. So you have a lot of people that's the yoke. have different yokes on them. Yoke of financial oppression. All types of things. Yoke of... Uh, depression, yoke of schizophrenia, all type of yokes. So we had to come against these yokes and break them. We had to we come against them with the blood and in the name of Jesus. You gotta break them. You gotta have faith. And we had to God said it takes faith as a muscle so you, you tell this mountain to move and should be cast in yonder, yonder place. So that's what uh, Jesus said to the twelve disciples. If you have a faith as a muscle so you tell this mountain to move and should be cast into the sea. So that's what he told Peter and them. You know, and the rest of the, the um, disciples, because, you know, they was overwhelmed when they was in the sea, in the ship, and the raging waters was, you know, coming from the left and the right, and they thought they was going to drown. And God says, you know, come out, come out of the water and walk on the water with me. You know, that pertains to the children of God. You know, when you're going through a situation, you cannot, you know, put together in your head. You can't imagine, like, why am I in this situation? I just can't even, it's mind-boggling, and I feel like I'm drowning in life. So God wants to build up your faith to be able to walk on water. Walk on water. You know? So that's all I got for you guys today. God bless you. Stay blessed.